a Wikivideo Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Stave Church A stave church is a medieval wooden Christian church building once common in northwestern Europe. The name derives from the building's structure of post and lintel construction, a type of timber framing, where the load-bearing or pine posts are called staff in Old Norse. Two related church building types also named for their structural elements, the post church and palisade church, are often called stave churches, originally much more widespread. Most of the surviving stave churches are in Norway. The only remaining medieval stave churches outside Norway are those of circa 1500, adhered in Sweden and one Norwegian stave church relocated in 1842 to the outskirts of Krumubel, Germany. Now Karpach is in the Karkonos Mountains of Poland. Construction Archaeological excavations have shown that stave churches, best represented today by the Borgen Stave Church, are descended from palisade constructions and from later churches with earth-bound posts. Similar palisade constructions are known from buildings from the Viking Age. Logs were split in two halves, set or rammed into the earth and given a roof. This proved a simple but very strong form of construction. If set in gravel, the wall could last many decades, even centuries. An archaeological excavation in Lund uncovered the post holes of several such churches. In post churches, the walls were supported by sills, leaving only the posts earthbound. Such churches are easy to spot at archaeological sites as they leave very distinct holes where the posts were once placed. Occasionally some of the wood remains, making it possible to date the church more accurately using radiocarbon dating and or with dendrochronology. Under the urn stave church, remains have been found of two such churches, with Christian graves discovered beneath the oldest church structure. A single church of palisade construction has been discovered under the Hems stave church. The next design phase resulted from the observation that earthbound posts were susceptible to humidity, causing them to rot away over time. To prevent this, the posts were placed on top of large stones, significantly increasing their lifespans. The stave church in Roldal is believed to be of this type. In still later churches, the posts were set on a raised sill frame resting on stone foundations. This is the stave church in its most mature form. It is now common to group the churches into two categories, the first, without freestanding posts, often referred to as Taipei and the second, with the raised roof and freestanding internal posts, usually called Type B. Those with the raised roof, Type B, are often further divided into two subgroups. The first of these, the Kaupanger group, have a whole arcade row of posts, and intermediate posts along the sides and details that mimic stone capitals. These churches give an impression of a basilica. The other subgroup is the Borgen group. In these churches the posts are connected halfway up with one or two horizontal double pincer beams, with semicircular indentations, clasping the row of posts from both sides. Cross braces are inserted between the posts and the upper and lower pincer beams, forming a very rigid interconnection, and resembling the triforium of stone basilicas. This design made it possible to omit the freestanding lower part of intermediate posts. In some churches in Valdra, only the four corner posts remain. Many stave churches had or still have outer galleries or ambulatories around their whole perimeters, loosely connected to the plank walls. These probably served to protect the church from a harsh climate and for processions. Single Nave Church, Type A at the base of type A churches, there are four heavy sill beams on a low foundation of stones. These are interconnected in the corner notch, forming a rigid sill frame. The corner posts or staves are cross-cut at the lower end and fit over the corner notches and cover them, protecting them from moisture. On top of the sill beam is a groove into which the lower ends of the wall planks fit. The last wall plank is wedge-shaped and rammed into place. When the wall is filled in with planks, the frame is completed by a wall plate, with a groove on the bottom, holding the top ends of the wall planks. The whole structure consists of frames, a sill frame resting on a stone foundation, and the four wall frames made up of sills, corner posts, and wall plate. The wall plates support the roof trusses, consisting of a pair of principal rafters and an additional pair of intersecting scissor rafters. For lateral bracing, additional wooden brackets are inserted between the rafters. 
Every piece is locked into position by other pieces, making for a very rigid construction. Yet all points otherwise susceptible to the harsh weather are covered. Single nave churches in Norway, Grip, Haltdalen, Undredal, Hedel, Rienli, Eidsborg, Rolag, Uvdal, Nori, Hoyord, Roldal, and Garmo. The only remaining similar church in Sweden, in Hedad, is of this type and shows similarities with the one from Haltdalen. Church with a raised roof, type B. On the stone foundation, four huge ground beams are placed like a sign, their ends protruding 1-2 meters from the lap joint, where they intersect. The ends of these beams support the sills of the outer walls, forming a separate horizontal frame. The tall internal posts are placed on the internal frame of ground beams, and carry the main roof above the central nave. On the outer frame of sills rest the main wall planks, carrying the roof over the pentas or aisles surrounding the central space. The roof thus slopes down in two steps, as in a basilica. The tall internal posts are interconnected with brackets, and also connected to the outer walls with aisle rafters, creating a laterally rigid construction. Closer to the top of the posts, shorter sills inserted between them support the upper wall. On top of the posts wall plates support the roof trusses, similar to those of the single nave churches. The Kalpanger group consists of Kalpanger, Erns, Hopperstad, and Lom. The Borgund group consists of Borgund, Gol, Heg, Hor, Loman, Ringibu, and Oyer. This form of a church can also be recognized from the holes which remain from earlier earthbound post churches built on the same sites. Little is known about what these older churches actually looked like or how they were constructed, as they were all destroyed or replaced many centuries ago history. Stave churches were once common in northern Europe. In Norway alone, it was thought about 1,000 were built. Recent research has upped this number and it is now believed there may have been closer to 2,000. Norway Most of the surviving stave churches in Norway were built 1150-1350. Stave churches older than the 1100s are known only from written sources or from archaeological excavations, but written sources are sparse and difficult to interpret. Only 271 masonry churches were constructed in Norway. During the same period, 160 of these still exist, while in Sweden and Denmark there were 900 and 1800 masonry churches respectively. Frostathing law and gillating law rules about corner posts shows that stave church was the standard church building in Norway. Even if the Catholic Church preferred stone, all wooden churches in Norway before the Reformation were constructed with staves. Log building is younger than stave building in Norway and was introduced in residential buildings around year 1000. Stave building is not influenced by the log technique. The word, stave church, is unknown in Old Norse, presumably, because there were no other types of wooden churches. When Norway's churches after the Reformation were constructed in log, there was a need for a separate word for the older churches. In written sources, from the Middle Ages, there is a clear distinction between staff and thili, or vegthili. However, in documents from the 1600-1700s, stave was also used for wool boards or panels. Emil Eckhoff and his Svenska stave Kirkor also included wood-framed church buildings without posts. According to Norway's oldest written laws and old Norwegian homily book, the consecration of the church was valid as long as the four corner posts were standing. One of the sermons in the old homily book is known as the Stave Church Sermon. The sermon dates from around 1100 and was presumably performed at consecrations, or on the anniversary of such. The sermon text is a theological interpretation of the building elements in the church. It names most of the building elements in the Stave Church, and can be a source of terminology and technique. For instance, the sermon says, the four corner posts of the church are a symbol for the four gospels, because their teachings are the strongest supports within the whole of Christianity. Church building was mentioned in the Gulating Slaven, which was written down in the 1000s. In the chapter on Christianity, the 12th article states, in Norway, stave churches were gradually replaced. Many survived until the 19th century, when a substantial number were destroyed. Today, 28 historical stave churches remain standing in Norway. Stave churches were particularly common in less populated areas in high valleys and forest land, 
and fishermen's villages on islands, and in minor villages along fjords. Around 1800 in Norway 322 stave churches were still known, and most of these were in sparsely populated areas of Norway. If the main church was masonry the annex church could be a stave church. Masonry churches were mostly built in towns, along the coast, and in rich agricultural areas in Trøndelag and East Norway, as well as in the larger parishes in fjord districts i Western Norway. During 1400s and 1500s no new churches were built in Norway. Norway's stave churches largely disappeared until 1700 and were replaced by log buildings. Several stave churches were redesigned or enlarged in a different technique during 1600-1700. For instance Flesberg stave church were converted into cruciform church partly in log construction. According to Dietrichsen, most stave churches were dismantled to make room for a new church partly, because the old church had become too small for the congregation, partly, because the stave church was in poor condition. Fire, storm, avalanche and decay were other reasons. In 1650 there were about 270 stave churches left in Norway, and in the next hundred years 136 of these disappeared. Around 1800 there were still 95 stave churches, while over 200 former stave churches were still known by name or in written sources. From 1850 to 1885 32 stave churches fell, since then only the Fantoft stave church has been lost. Hedel stave church was the first stave church described in a scholarly publication. When Johannes Flinter wrote an essay in Samlinger till det norske folks språk og histoire, the book also printed Flinter's drawings of the façade, the ground floor and the floor plan the first known architectural drawing of a stave church. Other countries it is unknown how many stave churches were constructed in Iceland and in other countries in Europe. Some believe they were the first type of church to be constructed in Scandinavia. However, the post churches are an older type, although the difference between the two is slight. A stave church has a lower construction set on a frame, whereas a post church has earthbound posts. In Sweden, the stave churches were considered obsolete in the Middle Ages and were replaced. In Denmark, Traces of post churches have been found at several locations, and there are also parts still in existence from some of them. A plank of one such church was found in Jutland. The plank is now on display at the National Museum of Denmark in Copenhagen and an attempt at reconstructing the church is a featured display at the Miskard Museum near Aarhus. Marks created by several old post churches have also been found at the old stone church in Gelling, in Sweden. The medieval Hedad stave church was constructed circa 1500 at the same location as a previous stave church. Other notable places are Maria Minor Church in Lund, with its traces of a post church with palisades, and some old parts of Hems stave church on Gotland. In Skorna alone there were around 300 such churches. When Adam of Bremen visited Denmark in the first half of the 11th century, but how many of those were stave churches or post churches is unknown. In England, there is one similar church of Saxon origin, with much debate as to whether it is a stave church or predates them. This is the Greenstead Church in Essex. Generate consensus categorizes it as Saxon. A. There is also another church which bears similarities to stave churches, the medieval stone church of St. Mary in Kilbeck in Herefordshire. It features a number of dragon heads. In Germany, there is one stone church with a motif depicting a dragon similar to those often seen on Norwegian stave churches and on surviving artifacts from Denmark and Gotland. Whether this decoration can be attributed to cultural similarities or whether it indicates similar construction methods in Germany has sparked controversy. During 1950-1970 post holes from older buildings were discovered under Lom stave church as well as under masonry churches such as Kinsarvik church. And this discovery was an important contribution to understanding the origin of stave churches. Holes for posts were first identified during excavations in Ernst Stave Church. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?